right, so for the first part, we have to use the given zero to find all the zeros of the function. So it gave us one zero. Do I know another zero? Yes. What is it? Positive 3i. So if negative 3i is a zero, its conjugate is also a zero. So positive 3i. So now I can find the polynomial that goes with negative 3i and positive 3i. So I'm going to plug it in to the factored form. So x plus 3i times x minus 3i. And I need to FOIL this out. So start by multiplying the first. Well, here they're conjugates, so I don't even need to FOIL. I can just do my shortcut. So the first term squared minus 3i squared. The squared gets distributed to the 3 and the i, so it would be x squared minus 9i squared. And what does i squared turn into? Negative 1, which makes it a plus 9. So this is x squared plus 9. Nope. <laughs> All right, so this is a factor. Now we want to find the other factors of it. So how do I find the rest of the factors? Long division. Long division. So x squared plus 9 goes on the outside, and our whole polynomial goes on the inside. So x to the fourth power plus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 18x minus 27. Be careful that all of your terms are represented and you don't have to put a 0x because even if we were missing a degree here, even though it's long division, you would still have to include a 0x with long division too. So just make sure if you start with x to the fourth degree, it has to go down from there. So now let's divide. So I divide x to the fourth power by the first term, so x squared. So what's x to the fourth power divided by x squared? x squared. So I'm going to make sure that goes on top of my x squared term. Now I need to multiply x squared with both things on the outside. So x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth power. x squared times 9 is what? 9x squared. So I'm going to put that under the x squared term. I change the sign of both of these and combine them. So these cancel. Well, the middle I dropped down. So, yeah, it would be 0 in the middle, but the 2x to the third power comes down. And then 6x squared minus 9x squared would be negative 3x squared. What do I do next? So I divide the 2x cubed by x squared. So 2x cubed divided by x squared is what? 2x. So then once I write it out front, I multiply it by everything on the outside. So 2x squared times, or 2x times x squared would be 2x cubed. 2x times 9 would be 18x. So I have to write that under my x, so 18x. Change the sign, change the sign, and combine. So I'm going to drop down this 18x, but what else do I need to drop down? The negative 3x squared. So negative 3x squared. This becomes 0x. And then what's next? I divide again. So negative 3x squared divided by x squared would be negative 3. Then we multiply. So multiply the negative 3 times everything out front. So that would be negative 3x squared minus 27. Change the sign, change the sign, and combine. So negative 27 plus 27 cancels, and we're left with no remainder. Because this was a 0x, so that's just 0 also. It will always, always, always divide in evenly if you multiplied it right to start and if you divided right to start. Yes? So we don't have to put 0x in our place. You don't have to. If you put a 0x on the outside here, that's all it would do is be a placeholder because you would multiply whatever you get out front by 0 and it would still be 0. So it would just like put a 0 here. 
Yeah, which you're just bringing it down. So if you want to put a x squared, I think that's why she did one each way on the answer key. If you want to put a 0x in the middle here, you can. Or just make sure you keep all your terms in line. So just make sure you are organized when dividing. All right, so now I have x squared plus 2x minus 3. No, wait till we finish. How do I find the factors? I factor it. So what are two factors of negative 3 that add to 2? 3 and negative 1. So in my parentheses, this would be x plus 3 and x minus 1 equals 0. So what are my other two zeros? Negative 3 and positive 1. So in total, my zeros are negative 3, positive 1, negative 3i, and positive 3i. Which I started with x to the fourth power, so that tells me I should have four zeros. Alright, so if 4 minus 3i is a 0, what else is going to be a 0? 4 plus 3i. So if I put this into my factored form, I have x minus 4 minus 3i and x minus 4 plus 3i. And then what do I need to do next? Distribute the negative. So x minus 4 plus 3i and x minus 4 minus 3i. It's always x minus. So like you would always change the sign of what you put inside. So if my zero was like two, then it would be x minus two. So now here I have conjugates. My first term is x minus four and my second one is three i. So I can do my shortcut. You could just multiply your trinomial times the trinomial, that's fine. But I would say do the shortcut. So you have x minus 4 squared minus 3i squared. So you square the first term minus the second term squared. So now I have to do x minus 4 squared. So you can't just distribute the squared. It has to be x minus 4 times x minus 4. And we have to FOIL this out. So that would be x squared minus 8x plus 16. I skipped a step, but it became x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. So I just combined my like terms there. And then... When I distribute the squared here, this would be minus 9i squared. And what does the i squared turn into? Negative 1, so it makes it a plus 9. So then lastly, I just have to add 16 plus 9, which would be 25. So x squared minus 8x plus 25. Now this is a factor. What do I do with it? Long division. So I'm going to use long division with my polynomial over here. So x squared minus 8x plus 25. Yeah. That goes on the outside. The rest of my polynomial goes on the inside. So 5x to the fourth power minus 22x cubed minus 27x squared plus 514x minus 200. So we start by dividing. Always just the first term gets divided. So 5x to the fourth power divided by x squared would be what? 5x squared. So the x squared goes on top of the x squared. After we write it on top, we multiply to everything on the outside. So 5x to the fourth power minus 40x squared. I'm sorry, this should be an 8x here. So x cubed minus 40x cubed. And then 5x squared times 25 would be plus 125x squared. So next we change the signs of this whole row. 
and combine. So the 5x to the 4th powers cancel. This is now 22x cubed plus 40x cubed, so that would be 18x cubed. And then negative 27x squared minus 25x squared would be negative 152x squared. What's next? Divide 18x cubed by x squared. So that would leave us with 18x. So once we write it up top, we multiply to everything on the outside. So 18x times x squared would be 18x cubed. 18x times negative 8x. 18 times 8 is? Well, that's 8 times 8. 144. So this would be negative 144x squared. And then 18 times 25. So 8 times 5 would be 40. 8 times 2 is 16. So this would be 450. So plus 450x. What do I do next? Change the signs and bring down the 514. So the x cubes cancel. Negative 152x squared plus 144x squared would be negative 8x squared. And then positive 514x minus 450x, 64. So plus 64x. Next, we divide. So divide by x squared. This would give us negative 8. Then we multiply negative 8 times everything on the outside. So negative 8x squared plus 64x minus 200. Change the sign, change the sign, change the sign, and combine. So these cancel cancel, we would bring down the negative 200 and these cancel also. So I'm left with no remainder, which every time we do long division here, you will get no remainder if you do it right. So next I need a factor. I have 5x squared plus 18x minus 8. How can I factor this? I can multiply the first times the last, so that gives me negative 40. Do I have two factors of negative 40 that add to 18? 20 and negative 2? Awesome. So I would have x plus 20, x minus 2. What do I have to, have to, have to remember to do? Divide by 5. If we start by multiplying, you have to remember to end with dividing. Simplify if you can. So this becomes x plus 4. If you can't simplify, usually we would move it to the front, but here we're going to solve for x anyways, but we can move it to the front just because. So I'm going to make these each two little equations. So I have x plus 4 equals 0 and 5x minus 2 equals 0. Solve for x, and I get x equals negative 4 and x equals 2 over 5. So my answers are negative 4, 2 over 5. What else? 4 minus 3i and 4 plus 3i. So these are my four answers, which I knew that I was going to have four answers from the start because I started with x to the fourth power. All right, so let's take a look at number five. Here we have to write the polynomial as the product of linear and quadratic factors that are irreducible over the reals, so it's asking us for that, and to identify the zeros. So we have to factor these. So looking at number 5, how could I factor this? 
Factor by grouping. Perfect. So group the first two, group the second two. What's my GCF in the first group? X squared. So I'm going to divide both of these by X squared. Take that to the outside. What am I left with? 2X minus 3. What's my GCF in the second group? 7. So I'm going to divide both of these by 7. That goes to the outside. And what am I left with? 2X minus 3. What can I do next? So x squared plus 7 go together in one group. x squared plus 7. And then my other group is 2x minus 3. Your inside parentheses have to be exactly the same in order to factor by group. And you end up with just one of them. No. It's just one. So then from here, I'm trying to find my zero so I could set both of these equal to zero. So I have x squared plus 7 is equal to zero, and 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. So for x squared plus 7 equals zero, what should I do first? Subtract 7. So x squared is equal to negative 7, and then what do I do? Square root. What do I have to remember to do when I take the square root of both sides? So plus or minus what? I square root 7. So we would take out the I. Next, we're going to solve the other one. So I add 3 to both sides. So 2x is equal to 3. Divide by 2. So x is equal to 3 halves. So my zeros here are x is equal to i square root 7, negative i square root 7, and 3 halves. Which you could leave it as a plus or minus for your answer. That's fine. So this is identifying the zeros. That's what we did there. The other part of this question says that we have to write the polynomial as a product of linear and quadratic factors that are irreducible over the reals. So irreducible over the reals means that we can't have imaginary. We can't have i's in our answer. So usually we would put x minus this 0, x minus that 0, but here I have i's. So I can't, so I have to go back to before when I factored that, which would be this step. So the product of linear factors would be x squared plus 7, 2x minus 3, or you could say x minus 3 halves, because it would always be x minus whatever your 0 is, and it's equal to 0. Or you could say equal to f of x. So typically we would say x minus and whatever our zero is, but because we have i's here, we have to go back to the step before of where we got that. So that would be the x squared plus 7. So both of these zeros came from this one. So this is what it means to be irreducible over the reals. You can't have i's in your product of linear factors. All right, let's look at 6. How can I factor 6? Just factor it. So what are two factors of 9 that add to negative 10? Negative 9 and negative 1. So what's going to go into my parentheses? Awesome, x squared minus 9, because I started with x to the fourth power. So it's the same as normal factoring, but here I have x squared and x squared. So x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 1. What do I have to do next? Equal them both to 0. So x squared minus 9 equals 0, and x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then we just solve for x. So add 9 to both sides. x squared is equal to 9. 
take the square root of both sides. So what does x equal? Plus or minus 3. Why not i? Because there's no negative under the square root. The i only comes from when there's a, square, a negative under the square root. So now we're going to do the same thing with our other little equation here. We're going to add 1 to both sides. So x squared is equal to 1. Square root both sides. So x is equal to what? Plus or minus 1. Perfect. Remember, you can take the square root of 1. So many people on the last test just left it as square root 1. So you, square root of 1 is 1. So my zeros are 3, negative 3, 1, and negative 1. And to write it in my linear factorization, that's irreducible over the reals. I don't have to worry about it here because I don't have any i's. So I would just say x minus 3, x plus 3 x minus 1 and x plus 1 equals 0. So these are my two answers. Let's look at 7. So what can I do to factor number 7? Grouping? Sure. Before I start to factor 7, what could I do first? Take out a greatest common factor, which is x. So I'm going to take out an x. And then I have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. And from here, I can factor by grouping. So group the first two, group the second two. Yes. You would have to remember to take out the x later on because in one of your factors, you would have, um, like, x would be your greatest common factor in one of your parentheses. You'd have, like, an x squared plus 3x or something like that where you would have to take it out then. All right, so from my first group, what's my GCF? x squared. So x squared goes to the outside. And I'm left with x plus 3. What's my GCF in the second group? Negative 2. Perfect. It has to be a negative 2 because we need the signs to change. So this would be x plus 3. Awesome. You have to have your inside parentheses be exactly the same in order to factor by grouping. So that becomes our first parentheses, x plus 3. And what goes to my second parentheses? x squared minus 2. And then outside, I also had an x that I took out from the beginning. What can I do next? Set everything equal to 0. So x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x squared minus 2 equals 0. So x is equal to 0 is already solved for us. Then I have x is equal to negative 3. And then in the third one, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So x squared is equal to 2. And then what do I do? Square root both sides. So x is equal to what? Plus or minus square root 2. So my zeros are 0, negative 3, positive square root 2, and negative square root 2. Which is perfect because I had 4. I needed to have 4 zeros. So now to write my answer as my linear factors, that would be just x, because I wouldn't put x minus 0. And then I have x plus 3, because I changed the sign, x minus square root 2, and x plus square root 2 equals 0. Yes, because you wouldn't put x minus 0. It's just x. So these are two answers. All right, for number 8, we are using the rational zero test to find the rational zeros of the function. So our rational zero test is p over q. So that is last over first. So 
So what are my factors of 24? What's one factor? Six and four. One and 24. Two and 12. Eight and three. I think that's all of them. And then what are factors of one? Just one. Right, so here we're gonna write all of our coefficients on the inside. Make sure you're not missing any variables. So I start with x to the fourth power, x cubed, x squared, x constant. So we're good. So I have one, negative two, negative 13, 14, and 24. What do we want to try first? We can try one. I don't know if it works, but I know negative one works. So we're going to try negative one first. So drop down one. Multiply. We got negative one. Add negative three. Multiply positive three. Add negative ten. Multiply positive ten. Add. We get twenty-four. Multiply negative twenty-four. Add zero. Perfect. So negative one is a factor. So I can start my list over here. X equals negative one. What can I do next? We have to do synthetic division again. But now inside my box, I put the answer here. So that goes inside. I have 1, negative 3, negative 10, and 24. What can I try? 2. So drop down the 1. Multiply. We get 2. Add negative 1. Multiply. Negative 2. Add negative 12, multiply negative 24, add, we get zero. Yay, two works. We can add that to our list. What should I do next? Now I can just factor it. So here, I started with x to the fourth power. So that means my first answer I got was x cubed. My next one was x squared. So now that I'm at x squared, I can just see if this will factor. So I have x squared minus 1x, which is just minus x, minus 12. Do I have two factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1? Negative 4 and 3. So x minus 4 and x plus 3 equals 0. Set them both equal to 0. So x... Minus 4 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 3. So my other two factors on my list are 4 and negative 3. What would I have done if this didn't factor? If I didn't have two factors of 12 that added to negative 1? The quadratic formula. All right. Let's look at number 12 now. So we have to find a polynomial function with real coefficients that has the given zeros. So if I have the zeros, negative 1, 2, and square root 5, do I know of any other zeros? Negative square root 5. So if you have a square root or i, you need the conjugate. So what would I do next? Awesome. It's always x minus whatever your zero is, so we just flip the sign. So it'll be x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus square root 5, and x plus square root 5. And then next, we need to multiply them all out. Where should I start multiplying? With our conjugate pair. Always start with your conjugates first. So my first term is x. My second term is square root 5. So I have x squared minus square root 5 squared. So what is square root 5 squared? 5. So this is x minus 5. So 
sorry, x squared minus 5. So that's what we get when we FOIL the conjugate pair out, or when we do the shortcut. Next, I'm going to multiply these two together. It doesn't really matter the order that you do it. You can multiply x minus 2 times x squared minus 5. That would be 5. Fine. But I'm going to multiply these two first. So I have x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2. I can combine my like terms. So x squared minus x minus 2. And then that has to get multiplied to x squared minus 5. So I'm just going to rewrite it here next to each other. So x squared minus x minus 2 times x squared minus 5. And then from here, it's just like foiling, but a little bit extra because we have three terms in our first parentheses. So just make sure everything in the first parentheses gets multiplied to everything in the second. So starting with our x squared. x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth power. x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Then I can move on to the negative x. Negative x times x squared would be negative x cubed. Negative x times negative 5 would be positive 5x. And then lastly, I can move on to the negative 2. So negative 2 times x squared would be negative 2x squared. And negative 2 times negative 5 would be plus 10. And then lastly, combine your like terms. So x to the fourth power. Then I have minus x cubed. And then negative 5x squared minus 2x squared would be negative 7x squared, then plus 5x plus 10. Oh, and it is either equal to 0 or equal to f of x. You have to set it equal to something. All right, last one. Let's do 14. So am I missing any terms here? Positive 2i. So I'm going to write them in factored form. So I've... Oh, it is. I thought that was a comma. It makes it a little bit worse. Thank you. So 5 plus 2i. Thank you. So I have x minus 5 minus 2i and x minus 5 plus 2i. I like to write my conjugate pairs together and then the rest of them can come next. So x plus 4 and x minus 1. All right, what should I do first? Awesome. I'm going to multiply my conjugates first, but to start I have to distribute the negative. So x minus 5 plus 2i and x minus 5 minus 2i. So these are conjugate pairs. My first term is x minus 5 and my second one is 2i. So I have x minus 5 squared minus 2i squared. So when we do x minus 5 squared, we have to FOIL. So x minus 5 times x minus 5, this would be x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then 2i squared, distribute the squared. So that would be minus 4i squared. i squared turns into negative 1, makes it a positive 4. So this is x squared minus 10x plus 29. Right, next, I'm going to multiply these two together. So I just need to FOIL them out. So x squared minus x plus 4x minus 4. x squared plus 3x minus 4. And then I'm just going to multiply it to my other guy down here. So x squared plus 3x minus 4. So 
So now we have a trinomial times a trinomial. So I just have to make sure everything in my first parentheses gets multiplied to everything in the second. So starting with my x squared times x squared, that would be x to the fourth power. x squared times 3x would be 3x cubed. And x squared times negative 4 would be negative 4x squared. Then I can move on to the negative 10x. So this would be negative 10x cubed minus 30x squared plus 40x. And then lastly, 29 times x squared would be 29x squared. 29 times 3. would be 57, so plus, oh, 87, yes, 87x, and 29 times 4, 116, so minus 116. Then we combine our like terms, so it's either going to be f of x equals or 0 equals, just make sure you name it, x to the fourth power, then I have 3x cubed minus 10x cubed would be negative 7x cubed, Negative 4x squared minus 30x squared plus 29x squared would be negative 5x squared. Then 40 plus 87 would be 127x, and then minus 116. And that's our answer.